Hi guys, Sherry here. So I'm being guided to do a reading unlike any I've done before. Um, I've been getting really heavy energies around my channel lately. And it's, you know, it's been making me feel uncomfortable, but it's not, you know, I can't really put my finger, ooh, my finger on it. It's like, I'm feeling, you know, fear and a lot of sadness and hopelessness. Hold on. And dividing energies. So, this isn't to any, you know, specific person. It's just, really, it's to the energy that is currently around, you know, my channel. <laughs> um, yeah, it. this is to the, the people who are sad, who... Um, are afraid um, who aren't quite that don't quite understand what's happening to them and so they're lashing out um, yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Osho Zen I'm going to do a Celtic wing and the energy is going to be directed at them the message is directed at them so I had pulled a spread earlier and it was really profound and so um, I felt guided to to do another and uh, because I really feel that you know spirit has something to say all right so today is March 24th 2017 and yeah it's directed to the shadow present position maturity this card showed up in my reading that I was talking about so this is um, finding stillness and um, flowering from within allowing yourself to open up and experience life so I'm gonna pull the cards and Actually, I think I'm going to read each card to you as it goes, as we go. There's nothing that I could say that could translate better than what Source has to say. So I'm not even going to try. So I'm going to even go more general with this. So this reading is to whoever is watching right now. Okay, maturity. This figure stands alone, silent, and yet alert. The inner being is filled with flowers that carry the quality of springtime and regeneration wherever he goes. This inner flowering and the wholeness that he feels affords the possibility of unlimited movement. He can move in any direction with Within and without, it makes no difference, as his joy and maturity cannot be diminished by externals. He has come to a time of centeredness and expansiveness. The white glow uh, around the figure in his protection and his light, all of life's experiences have brought him to this time of perfection. When you draw this card, know that this moment carries a gift. For hard work well done, you base your base is solid now, and success and good fortune are yours, for they are the outcome of what has already been experienced within. So this is the Ace of Pentacles, present position. You are already perfect, just the way you are. Foundation, beyond illusion. Judgment, awakening. So let me open that.
this energy is actually kind of making me a little nervous. So I apologize if my hands look a little shaky. <laughs> it's, you know, it's taking a lot of effort for me to, to put this video out there because, you know, it's, it's facing the darkness. It's kind of scary sometimes, right? So, all right. Beyond illusion, the butterfly in this card represents the outer, that which is constantly moving and that which is not real but an illusion. Behind the butterfly is a face of consciousness looking inward to that which is eternal. The space between the two eyes has opened, revealing the lotus of spiritual unfoldment and the rising sun of awareness. Through the rising of the inner sun, meditation is born. The card reminds us not to look outside for what is real, but to look within. When we focus on the externals, we too often get caught up in judgment. This is good, this is bad, I want this, I don't want that. These judgments keep us trapped in our illusion, our sleeplessness, our old habits and patterns. Drop your opinionated mind and move inside. There you can relax into your own deepest truth, where the difference between dream and reality reality is already known. Wow, I'm feeling spirit really strongly right now. That's pretty crazy. They're relatively the same kind of card. Okay, recent past position. Two of swords. Man is split. Schizophrenia is a normal condition of man, at least now. It may not have been so in, prim in the primitive world, but centuries of conditioning, civilization, culture, and religion have made man a crowd, divided, split. Oh my God, this is crazy. Contradictory, but because this is split, because this split is against his nature, deep down somewhere hidden, the unity still survives because the soul of man is one. All the, conditioning, all the conditioning at the most destroys the periphery of man, but the center remains untouched. That's how man continues to live, but his life has become a hell. The whole effort at Zen is somehow to drop the schizophrenia, how to drop the split personality, how to drop the divided man, a mind of man, how to become undivided, in, integrated, centered, crystallized the way you are you cannot say that you are you don't have a being you are a marketplace many voices if you want to say yes immediately the no is there you cannot even utter a simple word yes with totality in this way happiness is not possible unhappiness is a natural consequence of split personality it's exactly what it is seek to divide tool right into okay hopes comparison or sorry yeah compromise Don't be clever, otherwise you will remain the same. You will not change. Half techniques on the path of love and half techniques on the path of meditation will create much confusion in you. They will not help. But to ask for help is against the ego, so you try to compromise. This compromise will be more dangerous. It will confuse you more because, made out of, because it's made out of confusion. It will create more confusion. So try to understand why you hanker for compromise. Sooner or later, you will be able to understand the compromise is not going to help. Any co and compromise may be a way of not going in either direction, or it may be just a repression of your confusion. It will assert itself. Never repress anything. Be clear cut about your situation. And if you are confused, remember you are confused. This will be the first clear-cut thing about you. 
that you are confused. You have started on the journey. Wow, that's so profound. This reading is actually kind of freaking me out. Okay, uh, crossroads position. Stress, seven of wands. I'm just going to take a sip of my pop here. How many people do you know who, just when they're completely overloaded with too many projects, too many balls in the air, have suddenly come down with the flu or taken a fall or ended up in crutches? That's just a sort of bad timing the little monkey with the pin in his hand is about to impose on the one-man band pictured here. The quality of stress represented by this card visits all of us at times. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, the quality of stress represented in this car visits uh, all of us at times, but perfectionists are particularly vulnerable to it. We create it ourselves with the idea that without us nothing will happen, especially in the way we want it to. Well, what makes you think you're so special? Do you think the sun won't rise in the morning unless your personality, unless you personally set the alarm? Go for a walk buy some flowers, and fix yourself a spaghetti dinner. Anything unimportant will do. Just put yourself out of that monkey's reach. So put yourself out of that monkey's reach. Not allowing stress or the split mind to control you. What are you resisting? Innocence. Oh my God, this showed up in my personal reading as well. It's crazy. Sorry. The old man in this card radiates a childlike delight in the world. There is a sense of grace surrounding him, as if he is at home with himself and with what life has brought. He seems to be having a playful communication with the praying mantis on his finger, as if the two of them are greatest friends. The pink flowers cascading around him represents a time of letting go, relaxation, and sweetness. They are, all, they are a response to his presence, a reflection of his own qualities. The innocence that comes from deep experience of life is childlike, but not childish. The innocence of children is beautiful, but ignorant. It will be replaced by mistrust and doubt as the child grows and learns that the world can be a dangerous and threatening place. But the innocence of life lived fully has a quality of wisdom and acceptance of the ever-changing wonder of life. Oh, yeah, okay, this goes here, sorry. Okay, um, internal environment. <clears throat> wow, this is freaking me out. Same card, <clears throat> but I got this as an overall reading. Uh, energy for the reading. So this is a devil card. So let me get the page open here. This card recalls an old Zen story about a lion who was brought up by sheep and who thought he was a sheep until an old lion captured him and took him to a pond where he showed him his own reflection. Many of us, like the lion, the image we have of ourselves comes not from our own direct experience but from the opinions of others. A personality imposed from the outside replaces an individuality that could have grown from within. It we become just another sheep in the herd, unable to move freely and unconscious of our own true identity. It's time to take a look at our, your own reflection in the pond and make a move to break out of whatever you have been conditioned by others to believe about yourself. Dance, run, jog, do gibberish, whatever is needed to wake up the sleeping lion within. 
Unless you drop your personality, you will not be able to find your individuality. Individuality is given by ex existence. Personality is imposed by the society. Personality is a social convenience. Society cannot tolerate individuality because individuality will not follow like sheep. Individuality has the quality of a lion. The lion moves alone. The sheep are always in the crowd, hoping that being in the crowd will feel cozy. Being in the crowd, uh, one feels more protected, secure. If somebody attacks, there is every possibility in a crowd to save yourself. But alone, only the lions move alone. And every one of you is born a lion. But the society goes on conditioning you, programming your mind as sheep. It gives you a personality, a cozy personality. Nice, very convenient, very obedient. Society wants slaves, not people who are absolutely dedicated to freedom. Society wants slaves because all the vested interests want obedience. Very profound. External. What? Oh my God. Same card I got. That's crazy. This came for uh, internal environment for me. This one came as a foundation and um, this one was uh, fell out of a deck. So going with the flow. I can't believe the message is being repeated. That's crazy. Sorry. The figure in this card is completely relaxed and at ease in the water, letting it take him where it will. He has mastered the art of being passive and receptive without being dull or sleepy. He is just available to the current of life, with never a thought of saying, I don't like that, or I prefer to go the other way. Every moment in life, we have a choice, whether to enter life's water and float or try to swim upstream. When this card appears in a reading, it is an indication that you are able to float now, trusting that life will support you in your relaxation and take you exactly where it wants to go. Allow this feeling of trust and relaxation to grow more and more. Everything is happening exactly as it should. Yes. Thank you, Spirit. Being a little too relaxed. There, spirit. Let's play with innocence, I guess. Okay, so um, the outcome for these three cards. New vision. Hangman. Surrender. Let go. When you open up to the ultimate, immediately it pours into you. You are no longer an ordinary human being. You have transcended. Your insight has become the insight of the whole existence. Now you are no longer separate. You have found your roots. Otherwise, ordinarily, everybody is moving without roots, not knowing from where their heart goes on receiving energy, not knowing who goes on breathing in them, not knowing the life juice that is running inside of them. It is not the body, it is not the mind, it is something transcendental to all duality. That is called Bahavata, the Bhavata in the ten directions. Your inner being, when it opens, first experiences two directions, the height, the depth, and then slowly, slowly, as this beckons, or sorry, as this becomes your established situation, you start looking around, spreading into all other eight directions. And once you've attained to the point where your height and your depth meet, then you can look around to the very circumference of the universe. Then your consciousness starts unfolding in all ten directions. But the road has been won. That's 
crazy. Okay, so summary outcome. Creativity. The Empress. Beautiful. From the alchemy of fire and water below the divine light entering from above, the figure in this card is literally possessed by the creative force. Really, the experience of creativity is an entry into the mysterious. Technique, expertise, and knowledge are just tools. The key is to abandon oneself to the energy that feels the birth of all things. This energy has no form or structure, yet all the forms and structures come of it. It makes no difference what particular form your creativity takes. It can be painting or singing, um, planting a garden or making a meal. The important thing is to be open to what wants to be expressed through you. Oh, wow. Remember that we don't possess our creations. They, didn't, they do not belong to us. True creativity arises from a union with the, within, with the divine, with the mystical, and with the unknowable. Then it is both a joy for the creator and a blessing to others. Sorry, I'm struggling. I'm still kind of, I'm actually overwhelmed by this reading completely. Final outcome, totality. Every moment there is a possibility to be total. Whatsoever you are doing, be absorbed in it so utterly that your mind thinks nothing is just there, is just present. And more and more totality will be coming, and the taste of totality will make, it you, will make you more and more capable of being total. And try to see when you are not total. Those are the moments when you have to be dropped slowly and slowly. When you are not total, whenever you are in the head, thinking, brooding, calculating, cunning, clever, you are not total. Slowly, slowly slip out of the, those moments. It is just an old habit. Habits die hard. Yes, they do. But they die, certainly. Yes, they do. If one persists, they die. Thank you, Spirit. Namaste. That was beautiful. Okay, I'm going to... Pull one card from Call It Baron Reed and read that for the overall message from the universe to whoever is listening right now. Spirit of Place. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Spirit always comes through. It's, it's insane. It's so crazy. Authenticity is the essence of power. Our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it, just as we have a soul. The plants, trees, birds, mountains, and rivers have their own essence. When the spirit of place arrives in our reading, it says that the answer to your query is the overarching theme of your circumstances. Is your question about struggle? The answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your inquiry relates to finding love, then embody love rather than long for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlines your question and then name it, you'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is your authenticity. Thank you, Spirit. All right, guys, much love.